Now, everything I've seen on how to do this, they just start cracking this thing open. But I'm going to use a heat gun at first to kind of loosen up the glue around the edge. And then uh, hopefully I don't fry anything. And hopefully that helps loosen this up and I can pop off. The reason I'm doing this is because this right here is just bulky, it's large, it's not convenient. I understand Starlink is supposed to be for off-grid, but like, if you're an overlander, this is an absurd amount of room to like, have to adjust for, and I'm over it. So, don't have the money to afford for the 3D printed version, so we're going to make ours out of plywood and plexi. Let's get started. Starting to get some separation. Uh, it's not cracking and popping, so that's great. The whole point of me doing this is so I can go back later and back together. So I've been using two flathead screwdrivers, so I kind of wedge one and then work the other one down the gap. I get some more. This is much thinner than I thought it was going to be. All right, so here's your dishy. Now, you need to remove these cables. Heat gun is key to this part. Really loosens up those plastic welds. Oh yeah, it's coming right off now. But just in case, I'm gonna hit the other side real quick. Voila! So there's what the inside looks like. You can see that. What we're going to be doing is remove this, this. I believe we have to remove this piece so we can slide it back through. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Slide that out. So when this slides out, you see this is the connector to the other side of the cable. Just going to release these two clips on each side. Well, if you're in my case, and you're going to break these clips on both sides. All right. that off with everybody busting that off. Now for storage purposes we'll go ahead and slide this back in here. There's that clip I broke. And then this with this is gonna go back in the box. Alright so oh along with this we'll need some more. Cut a second layer out, one of these, put a bottom on it, and then layer the top with the acrylic, sand it down, flex the seal it, and that's it. So you see here's the inlay. Still broken. Okay. So I will cut a small hole here, lay my cable on the inside. Uh, I see a lot of people actually putting this connector kind of like right here on the outside it's kind of pointless I don't think that's very smart at all um, 
trying to create the smallest hole possible. So I'm going to probably just drill a hole straight in here from the top into this layer, lay this on like this. You can see I have I can get a little slot here to cut for my cable. I've got all my tubing laid out on this first layer. So now I'm going to install the cable, clip everything down, and then install the second layer. I mean, personally, every time I'm connecting anything electrical that's going to be outside for a while, even though it's supposed to be completely sealed, you never really know. A little bit of dielectric grease can go a long ways. If you look a little closer, these are just cable ties, cable loops or whatever. I'll put them down in the description below. You can get them at Home Depot or on Amazon. Now I just have some leftover LED um, clips that I'm going to use to hold down the rest of this loose material in here like this and like this here silicone the hole and then lay the second layer on top okay so got my clamp holding on here I'm gonna go through and just like the first layer Start screwing down all the edges. This layer, I'm also making sure I sink that these flatheads pretty deep because <clears throat> this is the layer that the acrylic is going to go on top of. All right, so rough model. That's what it looks like. Just a little test fit. Now, there's a little bit of wiggle room and a little bit of gap. I'm going to go back once this is all evened out. And use a little bit of foam in here. Uh, I've got some sitting right there. I'll just cut a little edge off and stick it down in there and then silicone the edge. But it's pretty flat. It's all just about level, which is perfect because I don't want this thing wiggling around too much. So when the acrylic goes on here, it's gonna lay almost completely flat. Well, the next part um, kind of went horribly wrong when I didn't take the time to learn how to cut acrylic. That did not go as planned. It was supposed to be a clean break. This just broke everywhere, except where I put the fucking cut. What the hell, man? This is $30 worth of acrylic. Are you supposed to score both sides? Bullshit, doesn't it? Ah! So, after a really expensive mistake and a trip to Home Depot, we're going to try this again. I removed the original foam I, I had used because when I got some that would be a little bit better for this. Um, this is a 5 16 wide, 1 quarter inch thick premium rubber self stick weather seal a spat and then a coping saw so once I get through the measurements on this acrylic I can cut around the edges and let's get started let's test fit so it looks like it's gonna be a little bit more wiggle room than I like But that's okay because honestly, I'm gonna fill these edges in with silicone. 
and that will hold it in place. Acrylic is its own special skill when it comes to cutting that shit. Um, honestly, the best option I found was to use a wheel grinder and just cut through it. And it's honestly worked the best. I even tried using a Dremel at first. It just wasn't enough. The, that acrylic's pretty thick. Uh, this ended up burning straight through. It was a pretty clean cut for the most part. I have shaky hands, but I'm going to end up sanding it down once I uh, get it all fitted on there correctly. But before I start applying, uh, before I start installing the acrylic on top, I wanted to make sure and test fit and then run the Starlink to make sure it worked. I've got it powered up right now. It's just kind of sitting on top of my truck. But you can see that we are online. And now I'm going to do a speed test. Oh, over here. So for right here, we are on a 20 megabytes per second with a 6.7 on the upload, which is pretty slow. But I've also seen really slow uh, speeds in the city. Uh, could be blockage, usage. I really won't know until later this afternoon when I go up the side of the mountain and test it up there what kind of actual speed I'm going to get. But so far, so good. We've got it plugged up. It's not affecting uh, how the app operates as well as the, you know, I'm not changing my, my router. In the future, what I'm going to be doing is using the Starlink Ethernet adapter, and I can just run an Ethernet cable outside of the truck. To an external router if I need to get on the computer outside of the truck. But for the most part, I'm on my computer, I'm in my truck, so the router I'm just going to be mounted in the console. Really, it's to make sure that I have cell service when I go off grid, so I really don't need a whole lot right outside the truck, and that's going to be fine for my, for my purpose. You may be a little better at carpentry and have a little bit more patience than I do, so your version may look a lot better than this. But this is something that's easily doable, under $100. At this point, I'm going to make it look kind of good, but I just need it functional. So all I did was take some of that leftover door sill foam that I originally was going to use the, uh, for the top acrylic seal. And cut it and filled in the edges so it's nice and snug and holds the, uh, the star link in place. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to silicone all of this and fill in these gaps anyway. when I was cutting this first piece of acrylic when I was attempting to mount the, uh, the one I broke when I was drilling the pilot holes a bunch of shavings were falling off from the inside so to avoid that what we're going to do is line this up and then mark all my drill points with sharpie putting drill holes about every two inches. Now I'm using number eight half inch stainless button head screws. Actually I end up lining up and running out. But for that now I'm going to be using a 9 16th drill bit to drill all my pilot holes and then I have a Thing of rubber washers that's going to go around each one of these screws as well as silicone on top of that because I don't like to leave anything to chance. I'm going to take a break because I can't find my washer kit. I have a couple hundred rubber washers. Oh, done. What happens when you live out of a box? Also, remember when you're trying to bolt this down, don't do like you would like a piece of pipe or um, like metal on metal where it's four corners and start going opposite or like a wheel. Start on one side and then work your way down. So what's going to happen is you're going to screw one side in, then do the other, then try to work yourself in the middle, and you're going to put a little bit of a bow and a little bit of slack in the, uh, the actual material itself. It's best just to start at one corner and then work your way around. The 
sum it up, you get the idea. We're just going to pile the hole all the way around, screw it down. We're going to sand the edges, make it all nice and even. And then I'm going to silicone again between the plexiglass and the wood. Let it dry and then put a coat of Flex Seal all the way around the outside. Once that's almost dry, I'll peel the plexiglass uh, film off the top and it's good to go. That's it. For less than $100, you can throw a bunch of stuff, get really mad, and have your dishy mounted to the roof.